In these environmentally conscious days, more and more drivers are filling up with lead-free petrol. Increasingly, green is becoming the dominant colour on our garage forecourts. But while lead may be on its way out, other additives are on their way in. These changes in petrol blends raise fundamental questions about whether the fire service needs to modify its standard techniques for fighting fuel fires using frontline low expansion foam equipment. Concern about the effectiveness of portable foam extinguishers for unleaded petrol fires led the Fire Experimental Unit at Morton in Marsh to carry out tests in 1989. Metal trays of blazing fuel were attacked by extinguishers. The results clearly showed that in small-scale fires at least, the foams used were just as effective at tackling unleaded petrol as traditional leaded mixtures. The FEU concluded that there was no need to alter fire extinguisher requirements for garages. However, when it came to larger scale incidents, it was clear that further research was necessary. It was feared that in a major fire, the stability of the foam blanket could be reduced where fuel contained high levels of oxygenates. Both leaded and unleaded fuel can contain oxygenates, but it's more likely that unleaded fuel contains these additives as they're used to replace the octane benefits of lead. With the assistance of the petroleum industry, further tests were set up. There have, of course, been a lot of trials in the past uh, on oxygenate type materials um, and this is not specific I should stress to unleaded fuels because these oxygenate materials could legally be added to leaded as well as unleaded fuels. What we are really concerned with uh, is the scale of those trials. Uh, earlier uh, small scale trials were carried out which were largely reassuring as far as the behaviour of the foam was concerned uh, given the limited amounts of oxygenates that are currently allowed in the UK. Uh, however, there was uh, sufficient uh, anomalies crept in to those trials to make us believe that larger scale trials would be beneficial. And we have uh, collaborated with the Fire Experimental Unit to design a set of uh, uh, trials which would give us the information on the uh, three specific formulations of fuel uh, that we decided would be appropriate to trial for the UK. The choice of fuel was made in the light of petroleum industry advice on trends in UK blends. With official British standards, petrol specifications permit a wide range of additives to be used, up to prescribed limits. It was decided to use three types of fuel that could potentially be sold at UK pumps. First, unleaded petrol with no oxygenates. Secondly, unleaded petrol of a moderate oxygenate level containing 3% methanol and 2% tertiary butyl alcohol. Thirdly, unleaded fuel with 15% methyl tertiary butyl ether, MTBE. MTBE was included because it's widely used on the continent and is increasingly appearing in UK blends. The three main foams used were first fluoroprotein, secondly aqueous film forming foam known as AFFF, thirdly film forming fluoroprotein foam known as FFFP. A new tray was designed and constructed with an area of 56 square meters to contain 3,000 liters of fuel at an approximate depth of 50 millimeters. Before each trial, wind directions and speeds were checked to ensure all vehicles and equipment were placed upwind of the fire. The metal tray rim and the tanker were connected to an earth spike in order to prevent flash ignition during the transfer of fuel. When the apparatus had been checked, a signal was given to start the transfer of petrol from the tanker to the tray. No water base was used because some of the additives were soluble in water. 
Finally, when everyone was clear, the earth straps were disconnected and the petrol ignited by means of an electrically fired cartridge. Exactly one minute after ignition, the foam stream was applied to the fire from the upwind side of the tray. Two different foam branch pipes were used to tackle the fires. The Angus 225H and the Chubb FB 5X Mark II. These were chosen because both are widely used on first-line fire appliances. The branch man, an experienced fire officer, applied aspirated foam to the tray surface, working in such a way as to cause minimum disturbance to the fuel. Until control was achieved, he held the branch steady, and after control, he used his discretion in the tactics necessary to achieve extinction. Successful use of foam depends on its rate of application, and this means that the role of the pump operator is vital. His task is to ensure that the water and additive are mixed in the correct proportions, and that the total liquid flow to the branch pipe is also correct. Throughout the tests, four observers noted the progress of the firefighting, and the time it took to achieve 90% and 100% extinction. Air and foam temperatures were recorded using digital thermometers, while radiometers were used to measure heat radiation. After 100% extinction, foam continued to be applied to the fuel for a further 30 seconds. After each trial, samples of foam were collected and tested in order to keep a check on the quality of the different concentrates. Five minutes after the fire was extinguished, a burn-back test was carried out to assess the resistance of the foam blanket to flame. A propane torch was applied to the surface until the fire was well developed. When one square meter was alight, the torch was removed and observers recorded the progress of the burn back. Preliminary tests had been carried out to check on the choice of branch pipe and the application rates that should be used for the different foams. These preliminary tests showed that the service's minimum recommended rates of application of four liters of foam solution per minute for every square meter of fuel surface using the Chubb branch produced acceptable results with two of the concentrates, AFFF and FFFP. However, when fluoroprotein was deployed under the same conditions using the Chubb branch pipe at the same application rate, the picture was very different. It could only achieve 90% success in 12 minutes, and the test was terminated at 16 minutes without extinction. During the preliminary tests, Fluoroprotein showed that it only achieved acceptable results when used with the Angus branch pipe at an increased rate of 5 litres per minute per square metre, which is the minimum recommended rate for fluoroprotein foam. In the tests on lead-free fuel with no oxygenates, AFFF achieved 90% extinction in under 90 seconds and 100% extinction in about 3 minutes. FFFP's times were not far behind about two minutes for 90% extinction and five for total extinction. Fluoroprotein did achieve extinction with the Angus branch at the higher application rate. AFFF and FFFP managed to cope with the different blends of fuel containing alcohol and MTBE and recorded 100% extinction times of about five and a half minutes. However, Fluoroprotein failed to achieve satisfactory extinction times with the other two fuels tested, taking more than 10 minutes in each case. When it came to the burn-back test, however, fluoroprotein fared best. It took between 10 and 16 minutes to reach 100% burn-back, compared with 2 to 4 minutes for the other foams. This shows the effectiveness of a fluoroprotein foam blanket after application. When selecting foam additives, brigades should consider the relative importance of extinction and burnback performance. FP has the better burnback performance. AFFF and FFFP have significantly better extinction performance. The trials at Morton were made possible by the generosity of the United Kingdom petroleum industry particularly BP, Shell and Esso, who assisted with the specification, mixing and delivery of fuels.
the main conclusion drawn from these trials is that firefighters using good quality AFFF and FFFP foam experienced no difficulty in extinguishing any of the burning fuels tested. All can be reassured that they are not likely to experience difficulty with current and future petrol formulations.